The first Soviet supersonic bomber was built by the Tupolev Design Bureau. Its subsonic range was 5,800 kilometers, while supersonic range was 2,700 kilometers. This was already enough to carry a nuclear bomb to Europe. Initially, it was supposed to be based on Tu-16. However, drastically changed flight parameters gave the aircraft a completely new outlook. Two engines were put under the fuselage. The supersonic image was recognized by a thin, highly swept wing, long squeezed fuselage and an all-movable tail. Its prototype was called the 105 aircraft. The aircraft was ready for flights in summer 1958. Like all new aircraft, the 105 required long adjustment. A year later, 105A was issued, which accounted for the deficiencies of the previous machine. Finally, this particular aircraft became the prototype of the Tu-22 bomber, which was passed for service in the long-range aviation. For its specifically thin fuselage, Tu-22 was nicknamed Owl. Air units met the bomber cautiously. At supersonic speed, the aircraft was sometimes hard to control due to imperfect engine's location. Pilots were not happy with the high landing speed. The highly swept wing provides for the supersonic speed but does not allow to fly slow. This, by the way, made the in-flight refueling difficult. Downward ejection system did not give chances to survive at takeoff and landing. There were cases when crews refused to fly Tu-22. Despite the deficiencies, the bomber occupied its place in the Soviet Air Force. In 1967, Tupolev proposed to make a Tu-22 modification with a variable swept wing. He insisted that it was a modification and not a new aircraft. This was done on purpose. A modification takes less time and funding, which is always attractive for the customer. Of course, Tu-22M was a completely new aircraft. It was simply penetrated by the most advanced equipment of that time. All this expanded capabilities of the new combat complex, but significantly increased the time for the new systems and units adjustment. The main problem was, as usual, the engine. On the next Tu-22M2 version, they were improved, but it did not help much. The aircraft did not show the required characteristics in speed, first of all. However, this did not stop its commissioning. Things went better with the next Tu-22M3 modification. New engines were installed and the air intakes construction was changed. Now the power plant was by a quarter more powerful. Each engine in afterburning now had a thrust of 25 tons. The aiming and navigating complex, the automatic control and weapon control systems were all improved. Tu-22M3 was equipped with a jammer. Combat efficiency as compared to version 2 increased by more than twice. In the beginning of the 80s, the new complex was passed to the air units. It is still on service in the long-range aviation. The Tu-22M3 was equipped with different types of missiles. 
As a bomber, it could carry up to 24 tons of combat load. So far, we discussed bombers as nuclear weapon carriers, but apart from strategic tasks, long-range bombers can serve tactical purposes. For example, destruction of the enemy runway. The aircraft range could be increased with the help of the in-flight refueling. However, according to strategic arms limitation agreements signed between the USSR and the USA in 1976, refueling equipment had to be removed from all TU-22M modification. The West feared such refueling capacity, which was putting the bomber into this strategic category. Its NATO identification, the backfire, was then in the headlines of all Western newspapers. TU-22M was used in Afghanistan. Taking off from the Soviet territory, they bombed the Mujahid positions. It was then became clear that the bomber's capabilities were excessive for local tasks. The bomber was created for much more, for destruction of entire cities. 